Hello. Um, this is The Decade in God and Me, uh, in politics and all the rest. Uh, 2003. I'm probably going to do 2004 when I get back from work. Um, but I just uh, I needed to uh, get this out because I was thinking about this over the last couple days. And if 2002 was the year I, I lost my faith in the Catholic Church, 2003 was the year I lost my faith in the Republican Party. Um, I was four uh, going into Afghanistan. Um, I was not for going into Iraq. I believe it was being rushed. I believe that all the evidence um, to go in was not sound. And I... The government seemed a little bit too gung-ho. I believe war should be something that should be a last resort. I believe war is sometimes necessary. I mean, like, for example, uh, from a historical view, I believe that we should have gone into World War II earlier. But Iraq... The reason we went into Iraq was to prevent, to destroy weapons of mass destruction, and to kill any linkage between Al-Qaeda, which there was no weapons of mass destruction, there was no linkage between Al-Qaeda. Saddam Hussein, while, Mus while Muslim, uh, was more of a secular leader. And Osama bin Laden considered, considered Saddam Hussein an infidel. And I'm just going to see some of the quotes leading up to Iraq. And George Bush, Dick Cheney, and Donald Rumsfeld proved themselves in this uh, trio of arrogance, of incompetence, and they dragged on Colin Powell with with them. Here are some quotes. My answer is bring them on. President George W. Bush challenging militants attacking U.S. forces in Iraq, July 2nd, 2003. Bravado. Talking about a crusade versus these evildoers, and I'm sorry. You mentioned the Crusades to Muslims. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what goes on inside Bush's mind. I don't know if Bush thinks the Crusades were actually good. I do not. I think the Crusades did more damage to Christianity than help. Interviewers asked Donald Rumsfeld, are you sure that we can win the war with this number of people uh, with the troops? Don't we need more troops? And he said no. He, he basically laughed off suggestions that, we, that, that the war might take longer, that we don't have enough pe people, not troops on the ground. And then he said, of course, in 2004, when troops had to scrap, dig through scrap metal to armor vehicles, as you know, we go to the war with the army you have, not the army you might want or wish to have at a later time. I mean, Donald Rumsfeld, one of the things he was trying to streamline the military, which, I mean, was a good thing because it was, like, bloated, getting, uh, getting, um, technology and things that we don't really need, but in war, you help the troops as much as you can. You give them the support they need, you give them the equipment they need. If you don't... You're arrogant. You're saying, oh, we can go on war on the cheap. And that's the thing that really pisses me off. Bush tried to go to war on the cheap. And at the same time, uh, having another round of tax cuts for the very wealthy. And didn't really ask the people other than the military people to sacrifice. Believe
deep, Saddam. We're taking him out. President Bush, the three U.S. senators in March 2002, a full year before the Iraq invasion. And that's one of the other things. I mean, there is evidence that the right wing, the neocons, wanted to take Saddam Hussein out way before 9-11. And they used 9-11 as an excuse to do it. Unfortunately, doing that, they dropped the ball, and um, al-Qaeda was not vanquished. And I also believe uh, Bush ridiculed nation-building during the 2000 campaign, but I do believe that nation-building, putting capital, putting schools, uh, education, job, etc., in war-torn areas can be built. Why is al-Qaeda bombing schools for, children, for, for women. Why are they attacking, in, attacking infrastructure and, and trying... Because they want po poverty. They want... They want it to be so bad that they have to go that, that Al-Qaeda will thrive there. And of course, the Mission Accomplished banner, can you get more arrogant, can you get more cocky than, than putting yourself in a, mil in a military outfit, going in an aircraft carrier, and just saying, we did good, we ended, yes. Yes, Saddam's government fell, but we're still in Iraq six years later. It's hard to conceive that it would take more force to provide stability in post-Saddam Iraq than it would take to conduct the war itself and to secure the surrender of Saddam's security forces and his army. Hard to imagine. Deputy Defense Secretary Paul Wolfowitz. That's your job to imagine. If you don't imagine, you're being arrogant. You're thinking, no, we can do this war on the cheap. And of course, the State of the Union address, this is Saddam Hussein sought significant quantities of uranium from Africa and that it was, uh, it was mis misleading. And then they outed the CIA agent. In March 2003, Dick Cheney, we know he's been absolutely devoted to trying to acquire nuclear weapons. And we believe he has, in fact, reconstituted nuclear weapons. And then in June, Donald Rumsfeld, I don't know anyone that I can think of who has contended that the Iraqis have nuclear weapons. Incompetence and arrogance are a deadly combination, which we saw in this administration. The problem is the right wing will not admit that, mistakes, that big mistakes were made. It's arrogance. Humility. And this is from a guy who, who was the most openly devout president we've had in a long, long time. But he was not humble. He was not humble. And seeing all this, seeing all this arrogance, seeing all this, and and basically saying, if you question the war, you're unpatriotic. All this stuff, it just, how could I root for the Republican Party anymore? How could I? I mean, I believe the Democratic Party has a lot of problems too, but my dad used to say, because um, he used to, um, he used to be a Democrat. And during, uh, during uh, the Carter years, the years of rampant spending, um, and um, uh, the rise of abortion, um, and all, all, the other, all the other things. And I mean, Carter did have some incompetencies in his administration, too. Uh, he said that the, the, the Democrat, he didn't leave the Democratic Party, the Democratic Party left him. And in 2003, I didn't leave the Republican Party. The Republican Party left me. And from, 2000, from 2003 onward, they've been systematically getting rid of independents and moderates. I mean, just look at the Tea Party Revolution. But um, that was 2003 with me. God bless.